everyone. I, Sunita Tripathi, am Assistant Professor at the Jindal Global Law School, where I teach courses related to intellectual property law. Today we shall discuss a module titled, Fundamental Concepts Pertaining to the Law of Industrial Designs. The aim of this course is to understand why do we need to protect designs in the first place, and if at all they are protected, how are they defined by the Indian law. We will traverse the legislative history along with the definitions propounded by the courts and discuss important case laws to understand this interesting species of intellectual property. The learning objectives include case law analysis, definitions and interpretation of important terms which, which define what a design is as opposed to what is copyrightable subject matter and of course finally leave you with some thought provoking questions to answer what kind of designs are protectable in India and abroad. So let's begin. The legislative history of the Indian Act of Design Law turns all the way back to 1872. The, the Patterns and Designs Protection Act of 1872 was the first design legislation enacted in India. Thereon, we had the Indian Patterns and Designs Act of 1911 and finally we have the new designs law which is known as the Design Act of 2000 as, as well as the Design Rules of 20, 2001. The design wing of the Patent Office, Kolkata, is entrusted to administer the provisions under the Design Act of 2000. So that is how Design Act is regulated in, in India. So why protect designs? All the shapes, configurations, patterns, ornamentations, etc. are the output of human intellectual effort. And so this species of intellectual property law looks to reward those creators who create newer shapes, patterns, configurations and add a new aesthetic value to existing articles. Much thought, time and expense may have been incurred in finding a design which could increase the sales and marketability of the product. Therefore, this space of intellectual property confers an exclusive right for a maximum period of 15 years on the proprietor of, of a design. The term of protection of an industrial design is defined under Section 11 of the Designs Act, which lays down that 10 years from the date of registration, which can be renewed for a, a period of 5 years, leads to a term of protection of, of any design in India. Therefore, a maximum period for protection of design right is 15 years. However, the right under Design Act 2000 is known as copyright. The exclusive right to apply a design to any article in any class in which the design is registered is known as a copyright in the under the Designs Act of 2000. And the criteria for registration of such designs qualifies only when a design is new or original, it has not been disclosed to the public, and is significantly distinguishable from known designs or combinations of known designs, and it does not comprise of any scandalous or obscene matter. Its use would not be contrary to public order or morality. One image in this particular slide involves a new sort of designed bookshelf. An ordinary bookshelf would have only levels of shelves wherein you can house your books. However, this one is made of wrought iron and has complex patterns which makes it a designer bookshelf. Therefore, whoever has come out with an ingenious way of, orn of ornamentation and creating a new visual effect to an existing bookshelf leads to a person entitled to a design right if he or she so desires to register it. The object of a statutory design law is to ensure that creators of profitable designs are protected against unlawful copying of the designs. The act seeks to actually protect visual elements of an article rather than the functionality of an article which would fall into the realm of patent law. Patent law has a utility concept and therefore any article which is so designed to increase the utility of an article would actually constitute a patentable subject matter as opposed to one which is aesthetically and more beautifully pre presented and so protected under the design law. In India, like I mentioned, the right conferred upon a registered design is termed by the act as a copyright. So the law of design focuses on the aesthetic feature of an article derived from its visual appearance and the subject matter which is protected by law of design is the application of the design to the article. Therefore, a design 
or a right of a registered proprietor of a design would mean the exclusive right to apply the design to an article in any class in which the design is registered, the exclusive right to import for the purposes of sale any article belonging to the class in which the design is registered and having applied to it that design. And so, the exclusive right to publish or expose or cause to be published or exposed by an article in any class of goods in which the design is registered to which the design is applied. The image here in this slide is that of an armchair. It is a designer armchair having a canopy of sorts of an appearance and therein in the next slide there are sets of other four new armchairs. Now, if there is a design week wherein designers who actually invest the intellectual effort to create a new visual effect of what an ordinary cha chair looks like and therefore, increases its marketability. It attracts and appeals to the eye of a discerning consumer who wants to buy a chair which looks different and not just an ordinary one. So, two characteristics of design law are visual aspects and the articles to which such design is applied. The visual aspect has an important impact on the types of subject matter protected as registered designs. The articles would involve the protection given only to the design which is applied to articles. This means the garden designs, urban planning and architectural designs etc. have been excluded from the scope of design protection. Let us delve deeper into the definition of design. Section 2 d defines the term design to mean only the features of shape, configuration, pattern, ornament or composition of lines or colors applied to any article whether in two dimensional or three dimensional or in both forms by any industrial process or means, whether manual, mechanical or chemical, separate or combined, which in the finished article appeals to and are judged solely by the eye, but does not include mere mechanical device and does not include any trademark as or any property mark as defined in section 4, 479 of the Indian Penal Code and importantly, any artistic work as defined in clause C of section 2 of the Copyright Act. Some of the important terms of this definition needs to be understood. Let us begin with the term article. The design must be applicable to an article of manufacture, thus it means that designs for buildings and structures will not be registrable. Secondly, made and sold separately. In deciding whether an article was made and sold separately, it has been understood that it is irrelevant that the part were in fact manufactured, stocked and retailed separately. However, what is important is since the visual effect needs to be applied to an article, this application has to be done in a way which can be removed from the article and is so not intrinsic to add a functional value to such an article. And therefore, design goes on to protect only the ornamentation or the visual effect. Appeal to and judge solely by the eye. As already mentioned, the design must be judged not by an objective measurement or scientific evidence but by visual comparison of previously existing shape, configuration, pattern or ornaments and thereby any added value which adds to the appeal of the article and therefore making it more commercially exploitable and therefore consumer, consumers will find it more attractive to then go on to actually purchase it is what is protected under design. So now simplifying the design, design features must be capable of having a separate existence altogether from the article. There are three main components, the visual character and the appeal to the eye and non-functionality, the application by any industrial process or means and finally, the exclusion of trademarks and artistic works and that will help you understand what is defined as an industrial design. The prerequisite for industrial designs is the aspect of originality or and novelty. So, a design to be registrable should be new or original. New meaning, the shape or pattern is completely new and therefore created for the first time and was unknown to the public before such time. So, in that sense, it has to have a novel aspect, a design made that no one has seen before. And going back to our previous slides where we explained about different forms of armchairs, each armchair is distinct in itself, but functionally they are armchairs. However, when you look at it from a perception of a consumer looking to buy a preferred armchair, you will buy some an armchair which appeals to your eye and that appealing aspect is what is the contribution of industrial design. Secondly, the prerequisite of having originality. 
A new application of an existing or known design to a new article is what is held to be original.